Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, August 6th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, and MLS is back. So my final game, look ahead to tonight's games in the NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball, and the second of the two MLS is back semifinal games. We'll go over the current leaderboard at the PGA Championship. We'll talk about the latest um, with COVID and the NCAA and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the NBA today. We'll go over the results from those games and look ahead to today's game. Six games to go over. The Jazz over the Grizzlies, 124-115. to 115. Utah, 43-25. and 25. Memphis, 32-37. and 37. Joe Ingles led the Jazz in scoring with 25. Um, Mike Conley at 23. Rudy Gobert at 21-16. and 16. Royce O'Neal had 15. Donovan Mitchell at 18. So all the starters in double digits. And Jordan Clarkson off the bench had 14. We all for Memphis. Dylan Brooks led them in scoring with 23. John Morant had 20 with 9 assists and 6 boards. Jonas Valanciunas, 21 points and 14 boards. Kyle Anderson had 12. And off the bench with 20 points, Grayson Allen. 76ers over to Wizards, 107-98. The Sixers are 41-27. and Washington is 24-44. and Joel Embiid. 30 points, 11 boards. Tobias Harris had 17. Josh Richardson had 15. Shake Milton had 14 and off the bench. Um, with um, 10 points for Con Corkmez. And Ben Simmons was injured in this game. Um, but reporting from uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, uh, he should be fine. Um, we went for Washington. Thomas Bryant had 19 with 10 boards. Troy Brown Jr. had 17 with 8 boards. Ish Smith had 12. And off the bench with 19 points, Justin Robinson. Nuggets over to Spurs, 132 to 126. Another best bet cashes with the Nuggets involved. They're 45 and 23. San Antonio is 29 and 38. Michael Porter Jr. had 30 to lead the Nuggets. He's been amazing in this restart. 30 points, 15 boards. Nicole Jokic, 25 points and 11 assists. Monte Morris had 19. Jeremy Grant had 22. And P.J. Dozier off the bench had 12. And meanwhile, for San Antonio, Rudy Gay had 24. DeMar DeRozan had 18. And Gay, by the way, off the bench. Derek White, 23. Um, Keldon Johnson had 20. Patty Mills had 14 off the bench. And... Drew Eubanks had 12 off the bench. He looks like the next uh, Davies Bertans off the bench scoring that many points. <laughs> Thunder over to Lakers, 105-86. OKC, 42-25. Lakers, 51-16. Chris Paul, 21 to lead the way for the Thunder. All the Thunder scorers, um, I'm sorry, all the Thunder starters in double digits. Paul, 21. Shea Gilders, Alexander, 13. Um... Steven Adams had 18, Danilo Gallinari had 19, and Luguentz Dort had 14. LeBron had 19. Anthony Davis only had 9 points, 5 boards, and 5 assists, and 5 fouls. So him being in foul trouble really hurt the Lakers last night. Kyle Kuzma had 10 off the bench, and Deion Waiters had 14 off the bench. It was a really bad game for the Lakers. Raps over to Magic, 109-99. The Raps are 49-18, Orlando 32-37. Fred Van Vliet had 21 for the Raps. Marcus Hall, 13. OG Anaby, 12. Pascal Siakam, 15. Serge Ibaka, 11 off the bench. Norm Hal, 14 off the bench. Nikola Vucevic had 12 for the Magic. Evan Fournier, 15. Gary Clark off the bench had 10. Wesley Iwundu had 11 off the bench. And Tyson Ross had 15 off the bench. Celtics over the Nets, 149 to 115. I think this is the most amount of points I've seen in a regulation game all season, let alone the bubble for anyone. Um, in regulation in a regular season game. Boston forty five and twenty three. Brooklyn thirty two and thirty six. Jalen Brown had twenty one points to lead the way. Marcus Mar had twelve. Daniel Tice had ten. Gordon Hayward eighteen. Jason Tandem had nineteen off the bench. Robert Williams had eighteen and Brad Wanamaker had thirteen. We all for Brooklyn. Their leading scorer was Jeremiah Martin off the bench with twenty. Zana Musa, 13 off the bench. Um, Dante Hall had 11 off the bench. Joe Harris had 14. Jared Allen had 11. And Karis LeVert had 13. 20. They put their starters back in for this game, and then they get their butts kicked. All right. 
Going ahead to today's games, um, the first game today is at 1.30 between the Pelicans and the Kings. The Pelicans are four-point favorites according to FanDuel. And I personally would make the Pelicans a three-point favorite. So one point edge towards Sacramento. I'm not going to uh, touch this game because it's close. Um, but the total I kind of like, and I would leave the over. I think that both of these teams play a fast pace. They can score a lot of threes. They barely play any defense. So I'm going to go over 235. Do I feel good about it? No. The Pacers and the Suns. The Pacers are two-point favorites. I would make Indiana a two-and-a-half point favorite. So yet again, another close line. And, um, of course, everybody's adjusting because um, both of these teams have been playing very well in the restart. I'm going to go with another over here. Both of these teams have been scoring very well in this restart. P.J. Warren being a surprise contributor for Indiana. Devin Booker playing in some big games for the first time in his life. And really has made the Suns a dark horse to steal that eight seed. Everybody's penciling in Portland right now, or even still the Pelicans. But um, I think Portland's in the driver's seat for the eight seed. I don't think Memphis is getting it because of the Jaron Jackson Jr. injury. That's too big of a blow for them. But... The Suns don't count them out, but I like the over 229 in this game. In terms of picks to win the game, straight up Pelicans and Pacers, but um, because the numbers are like kind of where I think they should be, I'm going to go with the totals here. So over 235 in the first game between Sacramento and New Orleans, and over 229 in the second game between Indiana and Phoenix. Miami and Milwaukee is a game today at 4 o'clock. Milwaukee is a 9-point favorite. Milwaukee should be favored by six. That is a very big line. I'm taking Miami in the in the nine. I think this line's going to go down. Um, I have a good edge on Miami right now. I think that they have a chance to win this game outright. I would sniff at the plus 320 on the money line as well. You know what? I am picking the Miami Heat to win this game outright. Screw that. I, I kind of like them to win the game outright. Um. Jimmy Butler might not be playing. I guess that's why the line's very high. And Jimmy Butler is a four-point player. And if Jimmy Butler wasn't playing, I would make Milwaukee a 10-point favorite. So um, if Butler... This is all dependent on Butler's status. But right now, um, let's say Butler plays... I'm. Easily taking Miami. If not, it's a stay away and it's close to where it should be. One point off without Jimmy Butler. So I'm going to take Miami for now, plus the nine. I'm going to take them to win the game outright. But if Butler doesn't play, then I'll switch over to the Milwaukee Bucks to win straight up, but probably Miami to cover. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the line might go up. So uh, maybe Miami does cover. So, uh, yeah, if, if this line goes up because Butler's out, then I jump on the Miami to cover at least. But if Butler plays, I think Miami wins outright. 6 o'clock, or I'm sorry, 6.40, you have the Clippers and the Mavericks. I would make the Clippers a three-point favorite over the Mavericks, and they're four and a half. I kind of like Dallas getting four and a half. I have a small edge on the Mavs here. Um, I think the Mavs are... A team that um, finally came through and I think has put more potential here. Um, we'll see what the Clippers do in terms of uh, playing their guys and whatnot. But I kind of like the Mavs getting the four and a half. I think they have a chance to win this game outright. I'll probably say the Clippers win a close, close game. I'm going to say the Mavs cover the four and a half because I have a, a one and a half point edge. Normally I like to bet the edges on my side if it's over one point. Sometimes a point and a half I would do. Two points, yeah, why not? Three or more, definitely. And that's an 8 o'clock game between, uh, I'm sorry, 640 between Dallas and the Clippers. And then um, at 8 o'clock, you have the Trailblazers and the Nuggets. The Blazers are four-point favorites over the Nuggets. Yet again, the Denver Nuggets continue to be undervalued. They should be six-point favorites. But if Jamal Murray and Will Barton don't play, it should be Nuggets by three. 
I get the Blazers' fascination. Like, Lillard and those guys are back. Um, but again, they continue to be undervalued. Give me the Nuggets plus the four. They continue to um, prove that they're undervalued. And I guess they're assuming no Murray, no um, Barton. And then Gary Harris, to me, isn't even worth anything on the spread. Like, I think Murray's worth two points and Barton's worth three. And right now, my nugget, my number's saying Nuggets by six. But if those guys are not there, then it should be Nuggets by three. So give me the Nuggets plus the four. I think they win the game outright. And then the Lakers and the Rockets is a huge game tonight at 9 o'clock. I'm sure that game is going to be on TNT. The Lakers are one-point favorites. I would make the Lakers by five unless if there's injury news related to the Lakers. This line's very low. I love the Lakers minus one right now. Um, I have a big edge on the Lakers. Um... And that's assuming Anthony Davis and LeBron play. But if LeBron wasn't playing, the Rockets would be favorites. The Rockets should be favorite if LeBron doesn't play. And my numbers right now would say Lakers by five. Say if Anthony Davis doesn't play. Anthony Davis against the spread is... Worth hmm, three points. Then it should be Lakers by two. If Anthony Davis doesn't play, it should be Lakers two. It's Lakers one. So even if Anthony Davis doesn't play, I still have an edge on the Lakers. So give me the Lakers minus one against the Houston Rockets. And like I said, the only way the Rockets should be favored or close to the favorites in this game is if LeBron doesn't play. And LeBron is still more valuable than Anthony Davis to this Lakers team, as well as Anthony Davis has played thus far in the restart. Now we'll move on to the NHL and go over the results from yesterday's qualifying round and round-robin games and look ahead to today's games. Panthers over the Islanders, 3-2 to two to get on the board in the series, um, so they avoid elimination. Ryan Palak... Number three star with an assist. Number two star, no points. Who just played a good game for the Panthers, and that was Mackenzie Weger, the defenseman. And number one star with the goal and assist, Mike Hoffman. Coyotes over the Preds four to one to take a two one series lead. That's a surprising result. Um, the number three star of the game with a goal and assist, Taylor Hall. Number two star of the game with a goal, Connor Garland, and the number one star of the game with thirty nine saves on forty shots, Darcy Kemper. That's something that Derek really likes, by the way. And he's been outstanding in the playoffs or in the qualifying round thus far. Lightning over the Bruins 3-2. to two. The Bruins won't get the one seed despite having the best record. So um, that's a little crazy. And I would have uh, thought that Boston would get the one seed because I thought that they were going to uh, come out and play well here. But no, they're not getting the one seed, which is a surprise for me. Um. Number three started the game with a goal, Charlie McAvoy. Number two started the game with a goal, Braden Point. Number one started the game with a goal and assist, Tyler Johnson. Abs over the Stars 4 nothing in the West qualifying round, Robin. Number three started the game with a goal and an assist, Junis Donsky. Number two started the game with a goal and assist, Andre Burakovsky. And the number one started the game with 27 saves on 27 shots with a shutout, Pavel Frankaz, who's... Um, been a great um, contributor for the Avs this season. Canadians over the Pens 4-3 to to take a 2-1 series lead. This is a stunner for me. I thought Montreal literally had no shot in the series. But, hey, I was wrong. They're a win away from the postseason. And the Penguins are a loss away from being in the uh, Alexis Lafierne sweepstakes, joining the Rangers. Um, the number three star of the game with the goal and assists. For the Canadians, Paul Byron, number two star of the game with two assists, Ben Chira, and the number one star of the game with a goal and two assists, Shea Weber. And the Blackhawks over the Oilers, 4-3. to three. They take a 2-1 series lead. I thought if any of the 12 seeds were going to upset the 5, they'd be Chicago. So now the Blackhawks are a win away from moving into the, um, the quarterfinals of the Stanley Cup playoffs. 
and um, that's a big deal for this young team. Um, the number three started the game with two goals and assists. Leon Dreisaitl, number two, started the game with a goal and assists. Ali Mato, number one, started the game with two goals. Jonathan Taves. And absolutely their uh, experiences helped them a lot with the veterans still there from their uh, dynasty years. Today's slate. The first game of the day, 2.30 on the NHL Network. The Canucks and the Wild. This is a 1-1 series. Um, I'm going to go with the Canucks here. I picked them to win this series. Um, their offense came alive the other day, and I think it'll continue to do so for the rest of the series. And they're a surprising underdog he- here. So give me the Canucks here to uh, um, take a 2-1 series lead. Round robin between the Caps and the Flyers, 4 o'clock on NBCSN. Um, tough call. I'm going to go with Philadelphia here. Um, they're dogs in their game as well. Um I think that they're a team with a chip on its shoulder. Um, Elaine Vigneault is a really good coach. I do not love the Capitals coach. This is a big game. Um, Capitals are probably going to be the third or the fourth seed. Philadelphia might be the one or the two. It'll probably be the two with the Lightning being the one. So give me the Flyers here to uh, win this game against the Caps as an underdog. And in West qualifying round robin, 6.30 NHL Network, the Golden Knights and the Blues. I'm going to take another dog here, the Blues. The Blues are an underdog. They're uh, minus 105 underdogs. Um, They should not be underdogs to the Vegas Golden Knights. As much as I like the Golden Knights, they should not be dogs to them. I mean, referring to the Blues and the Golden Knights shouldn't be favorites. Favorites against the reigning cup champs. They should be favored over the Dallas Stars, but not over the Blues. So... Give me the Blues here to get the win. 8 o'clock, NBCSN, Maple Leafs, Blue Jackets. It's a big one from Toronto. Um, I'm going to go with the Blue Jackets here. I picked them to win the series. Um, I think that they're a team that plays well defensively. And their style and the way John Tortorella wants them to play um, really has done well against Toronto with the exception of Game 2. So, give me Columbus to bounce back. Get my fourth underdog selection for hockey. And then 10.30 NBC has sent the Flames and the Jets. Calgary is a ridiculous minus 160. They are very overpriced. I picked Winnipeg to win the series for a reason. It's because of their goalie, Connor Hellebuck, who needs to bounce back here to um, get his team back in the series. I think they'll do so. So five hockey picks, five uh, underdog selections. So give me the Winnipeg Jets here. They're probably like a plus 135 or plus 140 underdog here against Calgary, and I take that right now. So give me the Winnipeg Jets over the Calgary Flames. Now I'm going to go over yesterday's baseball games and look ahead to today's games. Um, Some interesting results yesterday, to say the least. There's a couple doubleheaders. Game one of between the Yanks and the Phils. The Yanks uh, come up short in what would have been an incredible rally. They were down 11-3, to and then they uh, they scored a couple runs to make it look somewhat respectable. Phillies beat the Yanks 11-7 to in the first of the two games. Phillies 2-3, and three, Yanks 8-2, and two, Zach Wheeler to win, Jay Happ the loss, and Hector Norris to save. Home runs in this game, Brett Gardner, Bryce Harper... J.T. Romuto, and Aaron Judge. Oh, in the pitching lines. Shoot. Um, Wheeler, six innings, six hits, two runs, two walks, two strikeouts, you're a 2.08. J. Happ, three innings, three hits, four runs, six walks, a strikeout, you're a 10.29. Yikes. Game one of two between the Marlins and the Orioles. Marlins out on top, one nothing. Um... Getting the win was Nick Vincent, the loss, Alex Cobb, the save, Brandon Kinsler, the lone run in this game, a home run by Brian Anderson. Alicia Hernandez, four and a third, two hits, no one runs, a walk, five strikeouts, ERA of zero. Alex Cobb, five innings, two hits, and a run, three walks, seven strikeouts, ERA 2.51. Mets over the Nationals, three to one. The Mets are five and eight. The Nats are four and five. Rick Porcello, the win. Eric Feed, the loss. Seth Lugo, the save. Max Scherzer left 
after laboring through just one inning last night. Um, hopefully he's okay. Home runs in this game, um, there were none, but Juan Soto had an RBI double in his first at-bat back, so that was good to see. Rick Porcello, seven innings, five hits, and a run, no walks, four strikeouts, ERA 6.92. Scherzer, an inning, a hit, and a run, a walk, and a strikeout, ERA 3.29. Red Sox over to Rays 5-0. The Red Sox are 4-8, the Rays are 5-7. Martin Perez, the win. Ryan Yarbrough, the loss. Home runs in this game, Alex Verdugo is first as a Red Sox, and Michael Chavez. Martin Perez, five innings, four hits, no one runs, two walks, and four strikeouts, zero three point four five. 3.45. Ryan Yarbrough, 5 innings, 8 hits, 5 runs, a walk, 5 strikeouts, rate 3.78. Twins over the Pirates, 5-2. The, the Twins have an MLB best of 10-2. Pittsburgh, 2-10. Ryan Dobnak, the win. Trevor Williams, the loss. Home runs in this game, Max Kepler and Josh Bell. Dobnak, 6 innings, 3 hits, and a run, no walks, at a strikeout ERA of 0. .6. Trevor Williams, 7 innings, 3 hits, and a run, a walk, 5 strikeouts, rate 3.8. Five, two. Blue Jays over the Braves, two to one. The Blue Jays are four and five. Atlanta eight and five. Hajin Ryu the win. Sean Newcomb the loss. And Anthony Bass the save. The lone home run in this game. Adam Duvall of Atlanta to get the Braves on the board. Ryu five innings a hit. No one runs throughout eight strikeouts. ERA five point one four. Sean Newcomb five and two, or sorry four and two thirds. Five hits. Two and runs a walk. Four strikeouts. ERA. 6.57. Indians over the Reds, 1-0. Indians 7-6, and six, Reds 5-7. and seven. Mike Clevenger to win. TJ Antone, the loss. Brad Hand, the save. Did I say 1-0? I meant to say 2-0, the Indians over the Reds. Clevenger, 5 and 2 thirds, 2 hits. No one runs, 5 walks, 4 strikeouts here, right? 3 point. 2-4. Antani, 4 and a third, 2 hits and a run, 4 walks, 4 strikeouts, here at 2.08. Yanks over to Phils, 3-1 to one in the second game of the doubleheader. Yanks 9-2, and two, Phils 2-4. Two and four. Adam Adeveno in the win, Tommy Hunter to loss, Zach Britton the save. Home run in this game by Luke Voigt. Jonathan Luizaga got the start, 2 and a third, 3 hits and a run, a walk, 3 strikeouts, here at 4.32. Aaron Ola, 6 innings, 3 hits in a run, no walks, 12 strikeouts, you're a 3.97. He was tremendous. That was the best I've seen Aaron Nola pitch in a while. Royals lose at home against the Cubs, 6-1. to one. So the Cubs are tied with the Twins at 10-6 for the best record in the league. They have the best record, obviously, in the National League. KC, 3-10. You Darvish to win. Chris Bubik, the loss. No home runs in this game, surprisingly. You Darvish, 7 innings, 5 hits, and a run to walk, 4 strikeouts, rate 2.12. Bubik, 6 innings, 4 hits, 2 runs, 2 walks, 6 strikeouts, rate 3.6. Brewers over to White Sox, 1 nothing. The Brewers are 4 and 5. The White Sox are 7 and 5. Adrian Hauser to win. Dallas Keiko the loss. Josh Hader with the second save of the year. The lone run came on an RBI single by Josh Sogard. Hauser, 7 innings, 5 hits, no runs, 2 walks, 5 strikeouts, raised 0. .75. He was tremendous. Hauser was a popular breakout player pick before the season. He's owned up to that, absolutely. A lot of these popular breakout picks have been very good. Jordan Montgomery, Adrian Hauser, Danielson Lamette, who um, was a ridiculous 28-1 to to win the Cy Young over his own teammate, Chris Paddock, who's obviously better than him. Um, but yeah, Dallas Keuchel... Another good outing for the White Sox. Seven innings, five hits, and a run, a walk, eight strikeouts, ERA, 2.55. But ultimately, uh, his offense did him no good. Marlins over to Orioles, 2-1 to one in seven innings in the game number two of the doubleheader. The Marlins are a surprising 5-1. and one. The Orioles are 5-6. and six. The Marlins are definitely playing with a chip on their shoulder. Because of this whole COVID situation. And good for them. I'm very happy for them. I'm happy for Don Mattingly too. And hopefully uh, this isn't like a, uh, a fluke. Because I like fun stories. And the Marlins have been a great story since they've come back. And uh, 
Um, they've won every game thus far. And they won the game where uh, before their uh, COVID outbreak got reported. So um, that's crazy. And um, like I said, if this continues, Don Mattingly is going to be in the conversation for the National League Manager of the Year if he isn't already. Getting the win for Miami, Brian Moran. The loss of Asher Wojciechowski, the save Stephen Tarpley. No home runs in this game. Getting the start for Miami was Josh Smith. Two innings a hit, no one runs a walk, and a strikeout area of zero. Asher Wojciechowski, five innings for its two runs a walk, four strikeouts area, 5.4. Giants over the Rockies, 4-3. to three. The Giants are 6-7. and seven. The Rocks are 8-3. and three. Logan Webb the win, John Gray the loss, and getting the save for San Francisco, Trevor Gott. Home runs in this game. Brandon Belt and Nolan Arenado. Logan went five innings for it's in a run. The walks for strikeouts area 2.13. John Gray, five innings, or I'm sorry, five hits, six innings, three earned runs, no walks, two strikeouts area 3.31. He's been pretty good thus far this season. Mariners over the Angels, seven to six. The Mariners are five and eight, and the Angels are four and eight. Marco Gonzalez with the win, Julio Tehran with the loss, and Carl Edwards Jr. with the save. Home runs in this game, Max Stassi, Kyle Seeger, David Fletcher, Mike Trout, and then Mike Trout again. So uh, Mike Trout um, playing motivated after becoming a daddy, and that was predictable because Mike Trout's always motivated. Marco Gonzalez, 7 innings, 3 hits, 3 runs, no walks, 7 strikeouts, 0 3.06. He's been good thus far. Julio Tehran, two and a half innings, two hits, two runs, two walks, two strikeouts, three, 6.75. Today's games, um, starting in about 20 minutes from now, Twins, Pirates, Kenta Maeda, and, and JT Brubaker. Um, Maeda, 2 and 0, the 1.64 ERA, whip of 0.64. And Burbaker, um, no decisions with the 0 ERA with a whip of 1. So uh, the Twins have never seen him before. Although some of the Pirates guys have seen uh, Kenta Maeda. 3 o'clock, you have the Giants and the Rockies. Tyler Anderson against Kyle Freeland. Anderson on one the 3.68 ERA, whip of 1.91. Freeland 2-0 at the 1.5 ERA, whip of 0.83. So Kyle Freeland has been looking like the guy from two years ago. And that's a great sign for the Rockies. The Rockies have been a pleasant surprise thus far. This season as well. 3.30 or 3.40 Rangers Athletics. Mike Miner and Mike Fires. Miner owned to the 5.91 ERA whip of 1.41. Fires no decisions with a 5.4 ERA with a whip of 1.2. 4 o'clock Angels Mariners. Dylan Bundy and Tejan Walker. Bundy 101 to 2.84 ERA whip of 0.71. Walker 101 to 4.35 ERA with a whip of 1.06. 6 o'clock you have... The Yankees and the Phillies. Jordan Montgomery against Zach Eflin. Montgomery won and out the 1.59 ERA with a whip of 1.06. He was tremendous against the Red Sox in his last time out. Eflin is making his season debut. Reds Indians. Um, Luis Castillo against Carlos Carrasco. Castillo on with the 4.5 ERA with a whip of 1.33. Carrasco won and the 3.75 ERA with a whip of 1.33. Oh, 08. So that's a nice pitching matchup there. 7 o'clock, you have the Blue Jays against the Braves. Nate Pearson against Tukey Toussaint. Or Toussaint. Pearson, no decisions with the 0 ERA with the whip of 0.8. He was awesome in his big league debut. Toussaint, no decisions with an 8.1 ERA with the whip of 1.8. On Fox tonight, you have the Astros and the Diamondbacks. You have Brandon Bilek against Zach Gallen. Bilek 2-0 with the 1.69 ERA with the whip of 1.31. Gallen, no decisions with the 2.7 ERA with the whip of 1.3. Um, this should be an interesting match. It's on Fox. Um, surprisingly, baseball's on Fox on Thursday nights. Um, in terms of a pick, I'm going to go with the Diamondbacks. I love Zach Gallen. He was one of my breakout pitchers for this season, and I think he'll still continue to prove that. And I think the Diamondbacks will come away with a much-needed win to uh, get them 
to 5-8 and eight on the season. And then the other game on Fox is the Cubs and the Royals. That's going to be shown here in the New York area. Um, Tyler Chatwood against Brad Keller. Chatwood, 2-0 at the .71 ERA with the whip of .79. Brad Keller making his season debut. Um, part of me wants to go with the upset here with the Royals. And you know what? I'm going to do that. The Royals are a big underdog. Probably about like plus 135. I'm going to check FanDuel for that right now. But I like Brad Keller. I think he's a good mid-rotation guy. But I just don't think Tyler Chatwood is this good. So it's an anti-Chatwood pick more than a uh, um, pro-Brad Keller pick. They're plus 148, so they're almost um, plus 150. So I'm going to go with the Royals and the upset here over the Chicago Cubs, who have um, been off to a tremendous start this season. 7.30 of the Orioles and the Marlins. Um, Wade LeBlanc and Jordan Yamamoto. Uh, LeBlanc won and out the 4.09 ERA with a whip of .82. Yamamoto making his season debut. And the Brewers and the White Sox at 8 o'clock. You have Josh Lindblom against Gio Gonzalez. Lindblom, no decisions with a 4.91 ERA, whip of 1.64. Gonzalez, no decisions with a 7.36 ERA, whip of 2.18. Now I'm going to go over uh, the soccer game from last night and uh, preview and predict tonight's MLS's back game. Um, so coming out with the win was the Portland Timbers, 2-1 over Philadelphia. So Portland's in the title game, which will be held on Tuesday night next week. Um, and Portland got on the board first in the 13th minute of the match on a goal by Jeremy Ababasi to go up 1-0. Second half, 70th minute, Portland goes up 2-0 on a goal by Sebastian Blanco. And then Philadelphia gets on the board in the 85th minute on a goal by Andrew Wooden. And then... Philadelphia falls short. They go home. They're um, they're done for the tournament, and Portland goes to the final tonight at eight o'clock. You have Orlando City and Minnesota, um, two teams that um, have really done a good job in this tournament. Um, I didn't think either of these teams were going to be that great in the tournament. I was really way off predicting who would make the field of 16. There were some teams that were not expected to be in the top 16 that made it, like Cincinnati. I wasn't sure about Orlando City, but they made it. Minnesota, I was down on. They made it. But here, both of those teams are in the semifinal. Orlando City is very good. They have Nene. They have Urbino, um, Dyer. Minnesota has a lot of good players on their team as well. Luis Amarillo, Tyler Miller, the goaltender. Aaron Schofield, Robin Lode. In terms of a pick, I like Orlando City. I think they're the better team. Led by Nani and Rubino. So give me Orlando City over Minnesota. And by the way, um, The favorite in this game is Orlando, plus 125. Minnesota's plus 185, which I think is a ridiculous price for them considering how well they've been in the tournament. And then the draw before the uh, the shootouts, plus 230. Okay. Now I'm going to give out uh, or take a look at the leaderboard in um, the PGA Championship. Um... There's a lot of big names, obviously, in this tournament. Your leader, as of right now, is Zach Johnson with four under. In the tie for second place, you have Scotty Scheffler and Bud Cawley with three under. A big tie for fourth with two under. Um, Brooks Kepka, Jason Day, Dustin Johnson, Justin Rose, Matthew Fitzpatrick, Abraham Anser, among those in there. In the tie for 15th with one under among those, Tony Finau and... Daniel Berger, Xander Shoffley, Tiger Woods, Justin Thomas, Luke List, um, 
Jo Hyung Kim. Even right now in the tie for 33rd, Ryan Palmer, Steve Stricker, Kevin Kisner, Colin Mariqua, um, Jason Kokrak, Danny Lee, Louis Utsian, Zach Johnson, Chezer V. One over is the tie for 51st, Shane Lowry, Lucas Glover, Patrick Cantlay, Harry English. In the tie for 59th with two over, Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, Mackenzie Hughes. In the tie for 69th with three over among those, uh, Michael Thompson. In the tie for 74th with four over, um, no one really... Uh, Big, big time. Uh, Nick Taylor's in there. Uh, Danny Willett. And then in 78th with five overs, Rod Perry. Among those still yet to go, uh, 330, Tyler Duncan. Um, you have JT Potson going at 358. Um, among other notables, Patrick Reed at 414 as well as Kevin Na. Um, Bubba Watson at 425, Victor Hovland at 436, Ricky Fowler at 447, Phil Mickelson at 458 as well, Sergio Garcia, and John Rahm. So that's a nice uh, trio there. Webb Simpson at 509, Ian Poulter at 509, Doc Redmond at 515. Um, um, also, you have... Um, Lucas Herbert and Mark Hubbard around 526. And that's really it among uh, notable. So this should be a very fun tournament. And I said yesterday that I had picked Dustin Johnson to win this one. Now before best bet, I want to talk about the NCAA COVID situation. Big news yesterday, the first FBS program to cancel its season, the UConn Huskies. Um... UConn, this really shouldn't surprise anybody. Obviously, UConn's going over to the Big East um, next year. And they did that for basketball reasons, not really for football reasons. But um, their football team's the worst in the FBS. So, I mean, they would have only won one game anyway. And let's face it, um, their basketball teams probably make more money than their football teams. And that's like one of the few... Um, programs you could um, actually say that about and um, and so Randy Edsel um, I bet you feels bad and he's somebody that I think if um, we had a season he'd be coaching for his job but like I'm not totally shocked that it was UConn it was the first of the FBS to cancel its season and perhaps the only I don't know if he'll be the only but um so far, it's the only, and I think if they were, were playing, they would have been the worst team in the FBS, as they usually are every year. It's either them or, or the last couple of years, it's either been them or sometimes it'd be UMass, sometimes it would be UTEP or UTSA. They're bad, and also you're seeing um, big conferences going to the conference only. The Big Ten came out with their schedule yesterday. It's conference only. Um, you saw the Big 12 come out with their, conf their schedule this year. They have 10-game schedule. You have nine conference games, and then each team has a non-con home game. The SEC has not come out with their schedule yet. Um, so there's some interesting uh, thoughts there for gambling once I uh, decide to uh, get going on college football work and gambling uh, stuff. I'll probably have somebody on the podcast to do over-unders and stuff for college football. Maybe Jared Smith. I gave him a shout-out yesterday on the show because um, he just does awesome. And I forget why I shouted him out for yesterday on my show, but maybe I'll get him on do college football over-unders because he seems optimistic that this, there's going to be a season, and I do too. And he made a good point on his show yesterday. These big conferences have a lot to lose. So um, 
that's the reason why um, they're all planning to have seasons, and I think they will have seasons. And the NCAA also canceled championships for Division Three and Division Two. Um, those schools just simply um, are somewhat in trouble due to the COVID situation, so um, that's not really that big of a shock. And quite frankly, I think some D2 schools could actually beat UConn because that's how bad I think UConn would have been this season. And, yeah, so D2 and D3 um, canceled fall championships. That doesn't come to a surprise for me, quite frankly. Those schools are really, um, don't make that much money. But hopefully um, we see uh, winter sports happen for Division Two and Division Three schools, and um, any updates I have related to um, the COVID situation with um, college sports, I'll have for you on the podcast, obviously. And now my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I am going to continue to ride. With my horse. And that horse is the Denver Nuggets. They have been. Unbelievably good to me. In. This. um, Restart. They are. Underdogs against the Blazers. Plus four. I'm going to ride with them again. And. I think they're going to win the game outright. Um, With their guys. They should be six. Without Murray and Barton and Harris, they should be minus three, not plus four. And all due respect to the Blazers, they've been great in this restart. Maybe the Blazers win, but the Nuggets cover. If the Blazers win by one, I win this bet. So give me the Nuggets plus four against the Portland Trailblazers as my best bet of the day. And that's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from basketball to hockey to baseball, the MLS, look at the golf leaderboard. We will pick the four NASCAR races for the weekend and a lot more. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.